good. All right, I'm Taylor. Um, I work at St. Norbert College. I work in our IT department. My title is Learning Technology Specialist. And I just kind of want to uh, share this project we're doing uh, that we kind of started in the fall at St. Norbert that I'm really excited about. And I hope I can talk a little bit about it, a little bit about it, and you guys might be excited about it. That's kind of what I'm here for. So um, we call this thing Night Domains. Um, I'm going to tie this all back in on what digital ownership or data ownership and digital identity means, but I'm going to talk about night domains and how we use that to talk to our students about the concepts of digital identity and data ownership. So night domains is an initiative, like I said, we've had since fall. Um, other colleges around the world have it. We you know of like about a hundred other colleges that are doing something like this. Most of them call it domain of one's own, so if you're curious, you want to Google stuff after, that's what you look up, domain of one's own. But to even get there, I need to first quickly talk about what, what I even mean by digital identity. So digital identity is not far off from the concept of identity. So when we talk about identity, we, we're usually talking about how you represent yourself in a public space, how you choose to uh, represent yourself and what you choose to say and how you choose to say it. Um, but when we're talking about digital identity, we're normally focused on these three questions. Who are you online? What social traces do you leave? So what do you leave behind when you interact on the web? And also, I would say most importantly, how can you curate or shape your digital presence? What can you do about affecting your digital presence? Um, the other concept I kind of have to touch on before I get into the rest of this stuff is data ownership. And I think this one uh, sometimes can be complicated, but I like to make kind of simple metaphor. When we're talking about ownership and data ownership, I like to t tell, uh, use the reference of music. So I really like, I'm a, a big music fan. Um, so there's a big difference between buying music, be that physical music, like records or CDs or tapes, or digital downloads where you get an actual file that you can save. And there's a big difference between that and like a streaming service like Spotify, if you're familiar. Spotify, I, you pay like $10 a month or whatever, and you can listen to all the music that they have available. But the minute you stop paying for that service, it's no longer yours to listen to. And if Spotify was to go under as a company, you wouldn't have access to that. Now that's one thing when we're talking about music listening. Uh, if you were to lose access to Spotify, you could probably just go to another competitor. You have a lot of options. But this becomes really important when we're talking about digital identity. If your digital identity online is not something that you own and control, then that's a problem because your digital identity is much less replaceable, I would say, than, than music listening. Um, so that's kind of where I, where I kind of, that's a preamble, I guess, um, for Night Domain. So, so what, is, what is Night Domains? Basically, it's a, a a service that we've launched at the college that allows our students to make websites. And the big, I think, important thing about this is how they can make them and, and what, what kinds of questions we're asking them. Um, basically, Night Domains gives them the access to hosting, uh, web hosting, and all the different things they would need to own uh, their own website for free while they're at St. Norbert. And they get access to a service that is uh, very much like what they would get if they went and paid out for their web for their own web hosting at a large company like like Bluehost or GoDaddy. There's tons of companies, but they get very much the same tools. Uh, we have students at the college who use it to make portfolios and uh, blogs. Some some of our students are want want to write and publish their work. Uh, we have students who kind of do a mix. Like Ingrid on the left here, she has a blog where she talks about her her work. She actually works with us uh, in ITS. But she's also a student teacher right now, actually. So she also has information on her site about her philosophy of teaching and, and education. And then we have Annika on the right who uh, is using her uh, night domain as a website where she can promote her side business and show her skills. She's only a sophomore, but she's already kind of cultivating this stuff. So the idea behind this thing is that we can make this really easy for students to get into. They don't have to think about, well, do I want to spend $100 on a website? Is it even worth it? We don't want them to have to think about that. We want them to just get in and start experimenting and, and trying these things out. So 
If you're familiar at all with how web hosting and, and like the university or college uh, is experienced with that, a lot of colleges have prov provided some type of portfolio service or something like that that students can use in the past, basically since the web has been around. Um, but there's a big difference between a lot of those traditional options and what we do at Night Domain. So I'm gonna kind of go through those really quick. There's some technical stuff in here. Um, some, sometimes it's really important though, so I really do think it's, it's a good thing to go through. So the big traditional options, most, most colleges that do something like this, um, and even at St. Norbert we used to do things like this, uh, you get an assigned address, so you really don't have any control over, I'm using the laser pointer, it's not something I do all the time, but uh, you don't get any control over this address. So here's an example of uh, something our computer science department used to use for students who were making senior projects. They had compsci02.sc.edu slash cs460 slash 2018 slash berrzg. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. <laughs> It's also not something I would encourage them to put on a resume or a business card. I mean, it's fine, it works, it definitely works. But they don't have any control over that address, it's just what they get. They also, students who are using it, basically only get to use an application that IT supports. And we're, we're a small IT department, we can't support a lot of different types of web content. We can basically <laughs> say, you can use this, or you can code the page yourself, and that's, that's what we have the ability and expertise to support. Um, when, when they leave, the site will probably just be deleted, and it's really hard for them to actually bring that stuff with them. And also, it's usually something that's only available if faculty request it first, and uh, that just narrows the scope a lot. So with something like Night Domains, in contrast, you choose the address, or what I would say, you own the address. So I have a site on Night Domains, it's called taylor.night.domains. But I also wanted to have a .com, you know, you see people that, you know, google.com, you've probably heard of .coms before. Um, I wanted to have taylorjade.com. So I was able to, to go and buy that, it's like $12 a year to own a .com. And I actually mapped it to my night domain. So I get to keep that address and use it. Um, with night domains, you get to use many different applications. So uh, you don't have to just code, you don't have to know how to code a website yourself necessarily. You could use something like WordPress or Omeka. There's, there's tons of different applications that are out there that are free to use that make it really easy to build a website. Um, and it's also, crucially, it's built using standard technologies. I kind of alluded to this before, that you could get anywhere if you were to pay for your own hosting. So it's really easy to take the stuff you built on Night Domains and move it to your own service uh, whenever you want to. So you really have ownership over that data. It's easy to move on or off of Night Domains. And finally, it's available to any student, staff, or faculty who's at St. Norbert. They can just sign in. They don't have to ask permission. They just have to agree to the terms of service, and they can sign it. So you might be looking at that long technical list and being, okay, that's neat. <laughs> it's kind of like more flexible web hosting. I mean, why are you that excited? Why am I standing up here all like excited about this web hosting? Really, I, I did kind of deceive you. I missed, I, I, I didn't put one thing on the bullet points. That's the most important thing. And, and I'm gonna kind of make an analogy. Does anyone here listen to podcasts a lot? Like, anyone raise your hand if you listen to podcasts? Okay, a lot of people, cool. So, um, has anyone heard a Squarespace ad before? <laughs> yeah, raise your hand. Okay, almost the same amount of people. So, most Squarespace ads kind of sound the same Sort of. They, they have ad copy that they give out. And basically, Squarespace allows people to make websites. It's a service. It's a good service. It's a, um, but basically, their ad copy is always like, Squarespace allows you to make a blog or portfolio without having to know anything about making a website. And I think of Night Domains like anti-Squarespace. <laughs> basically, uh, Night Domains is an all-in-one platform where students can make a blog portfolio or whatever they need for a website, but in the process they will learn how to make a website. They will learn some things about how websites work. That's really the key thing here. So I've added my last bullet point. Here, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, in the process they've learned a skill. <laughs> they've actually, it, we're, we're a college, we're teaching them things. That's the whole point, right? So we can give them 
a platform and they could put a, like a portfolio together and then when they leave it gets deleted, they didn't really learn anything. However, if they use night domains, they have to set it up themselves and they have to learn a little, if they have to roll their sleeves up and get their hands dirty, sometimes it will take them some time, but they'll have come out of it knowing how to put a website together. So you probably hear that and go, that's cool. Um, what exactly do you need to make a website? I, I always kind of describe it as three things. You need a domain name, so like google.com, facebook.com, that's a domain, or uh, uh, steam engine, gb.com. So there, that's, those are all domain names. You need one of those. You also need server space or hosting, same thing, uh, basically. And I always describe that to people as a, a server is just someone else's computer that you're paying to use that they keep online for you, basically. That's all a server is. And then you also need content. So you need to put something on that server so people can view it. Um, so the question there is, what kind of application can you use to develop the content? You don't just like use Microsoft Word and put it on a web server. I mean, you could do that, but it wouldn't really be a website. Um, or do you have to code it yourself? Those are the questions you have to think about. With Night Domains, it kind of maps out like this. They get a subdomain, which is that Taylor part before night.domains, taylor.night.domains. They get one of those for free. Um, or they can choose to uh, go register a domain name like taylorjaden.com at a service. The server space we pay for. That's really what Night Domains is, is we're gonna, we're gonna pay for the hosting. And the content is they can use basically anything they could, again, I've said this twice now, anything they would get at a normal hosting service. So they can use all kinds of different applications or they can learn to code it themselves if they want to do that. So that also begs the question, all right, that's a lot of complexity. Uh, students aren't necessarily going to just discover that, right? Like, they, I mean, we can give them the tools. Some people will research what those tools are and what that means for them but they're gonna need guidance. So that's kind of where the tech bar, this uh, other little project we've had for about two years now, um, comes into play. And the tech bar is basically, we, we like to say it's the writing center, but for digital projects. So students can come in, um, me and my coworkers train uh, student workers who work at the tech bar, we call them consultants. And those consultants meet with students and help them set up websites and help them talk and about their digital identity and what it means to own your own data, we have these conversations with them. That's really the idea. Really, the whole, the whole thing that we hope with, with Night Domains for St. Norbert College is that students learn a little bit about making a website, they get to own their identity, and they get to know what that means through creating a website. And really, we want to, the, to take these liberal arts students and have them be able to describe what they've learned in their time at SNC, not just night domains, of course, but their degree, and be able to articulate that. And that, for us, we think the website's a really powerful way to do that. So that's kind of my spiel. I guess we open it up for questions. Um, the Q and A. Yeah. Is this working now? Hello. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So first round of applause. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really sorry for totally bashing your flow there, man. Nah, it's okay. Sorry about that. My tea is. This is like. This. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, questions for Taylor? Yeah? Yeah, Taylor, I was wondering uh, how large is your college, college? And how many students are there at the school? And then, I have a question after that. How many students are on these uh, programs? And how does that compare to faculty? Sure, so uh, we've got over 2,000 students. Um, a great thing for me to do would have been to look up that actual number before I came here today. <laughs> but it is over 2,000. Um, and as far as uh, p actual usage of the platform, we have that, I do know. <laughs> uh, we have 178 students currently using it, and we have uh, 208 total, so that would be, was that 30? Yeah, 30 staff or faculty using the platform. Um, we've only had it since fall, so we, it's, it's not been around that long. We did a pilot, but it was very limited, like kind of, we had maybe 20 people doing that before it. So it, we're still very early days with this stuff. What question? So Taylor began talking about uh, data ownership, so the student graduates. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Because you've been hosting. Yes. What's the next step? 
So, so they, they get access to night domains until a year after they've left the college. But the ownership piece of this is that because this is built on all standard stuff, they can actually transfer this stuff directly. Like they don't have to actually uh, rebuild their website on a different platform. They can transfer this stuff directly to a lot of different hosts and we help them do that at the tech bar even if they've graduated already. Um, so in fact, we, we actually have a web page that I'm working on that we've, we've got a, a, a partnership with one company that they can actually basically just hit sign up and that company will negotiate with us in IT and we will help them transfer it, transfer it without the student even having to um, come in if they're not you know, in the area anymore because they've graduated. But yeah, we, we help them move that. that. To me, that's the ownership part with something like like Wix or Squarespace, those are really good tools, but if you have a Wix site and you don't want to be on Wix anymore, you can't really transfer that. You have to just rebuild it, which is fine. It's just something you have to know about, really. One more question. So Wix and Squarespace, you said there's also WordPress and Omega, those are the free ones out there, right? There's, there's, ton, there's literally thousands of free open source applications. Um, WordPress is by far the most popular. Uh, their whole thing, they say they power 30% of the web. Uh, basically, WordPress is a company that will sell you hosting, but also they make this free program that anyone can use, and it's massively popular, an open source program. Omeka is primarily used actually for like uh, databases and collections. A lot of museums use Omeka, um, and there's, there's tons of other applications out there too. Paul, did you have one more question? Quick, um, did you have any stats or insight as far as how many students are using it to share their artistic and academic pursuits compared to those who are just blogging about their lives? Um, I don't have any hard stats on that right now. But I would say that anecdotally, um, we, we see more students using it in a portfolio context. So one thing I would have loved to go into more is kind of how we hope to promote this because if, I mean, if you've been, if you've ever worked at a college or been a student, you know, there's so many things going on. Just because we have this doesn't mean anybody knows about it, right? We have to promote it. Um, so we actually work a lot with classes that might use uh, a website as part of an assignment. And, and then they get to publish in the open, and there's all kinds of great, uh, great reasons to do that. But on the side, when they come into the tech bar for help with this web stuff, we go, and have you thought about a personal portfolio site? And we actually get students who take us up on that. Great, thank you very much, Taylor. Appreciate it.